I'm Shamaya. It's like papaya, except it's not. And this is Plot Twist Please, the podcast. Thank you so much for joining me for this special Valentine's Day episode. I have my friend Brittany Moore joining me in this episode, and we're going to chat about something that I'm sure a lot of you are wondering about dating. So it's a weird time to date. You know, there's COVID. We've got a lot of people embarking on this new wave of racial consciousness. And so we just wanted to have some girl chat about it. Stay tuned. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share if you feel so led. Check it out. Oh my gosh. I like am finally here. Like this is the thing. Yes, 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 for sure. Come on, Queen of the Plot Twist. Oh my gosh. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so glad I got to have you on today. Um, How have you been doing this thing going on in this pandemic? I am, you know, I am making it, you know, in spite (laughs) of everything. Like, I gotta say, I'm very blessed (laughs) to like have my sanity and like have some motivation to do stuff, which is like few and far between these days with the mm-hmm. pandemic but otherwise you know yeah I'm you know out here trying to survive like everybody else like I guess. yeah yeah oh man it's it's a whole time like like I was at work this morning because I work with preschoolers mm-hmm. as you know and mm-hmm. I had a moment where I was like wait a minute this is all happening and these kids <laughs> are just in the middle of it and like I, I just wonder what goes through their heads about this time specifically, like what their experience has been like. Yeah, you know what's so crazy is that like I like, especially because I'm like trying to like get into like the children's book world, like people mm-hmm. have already come out with like children's books on the pandemic. Like, Whoa, wild. Yeah, like little animated like germs. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like what is this? Oh my gosh, wild. Yes, let me tell you, people are on it, man. Like... I they guess. don't have so time. Not, sleeping at all. Mm-hmm. not at all. Not at all. But when you think about it, it's like these kids, like they have to know too. Like they need to know like what's going on. And I, you know, like you would think that like a children's book would be like a good way to kind of explain like this big, scary thing to children, you know? So. Yeah, for real. That's, that's so fascinating to me because it's such a scary time for a lot of people, well, for everyone really. And, yeah. and yeah. sometimes you, you see it just in, how they get frustrated over things that are seemingly nothing or Mm -hmm. just sometimes in their overall mood for the day where you're like, oh my gosh, what, why, like you were fine yesterday. Why are you all of a sudden so frustrated over someone using a block you were just using, you know, and it's, you forget they actually absorb everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Honestly, same. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like, (laughs) me too, girl. I'm also struggling. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, one of the things that I feel like this pandemic and everything that has been in correlation with that, you know, how mm-hmm. Black Lives Matter has kind of come at the full front again, um, mm-hmm. you know, it kind of ebbs and flows, but specifically now there's been a large outcry for, for real tangible change. Mm-hmm. Um, knowing all that and knowing that kind of social climate, I guess, mm-hmm. what do you think has changed about dating in comparison to before the pandemic um, with after everything started getting blown Man, up? Man, I feel like so I can only speak from my own experience. Right. Um, Mm -hmm. I did do, I didn't do a ton of like formal dating during the pandemic in terms of like being on websites and like going out with like, and all of that stuff. I did do a little bit of it. And the big thing that the big takeaway for me was that I just, I didn't want to meet people (laughs) like in person. Like I'm just like, you know, and, and, you know, I, I don't know. I feel like in terms of online dating, like I was familiar with that, format personally so that wasn't like a big adjustment for me it just Mm -hmm. like when it came down to it I'm like I don't feel comfortable in fact this actually gives me anxiety to think about like going out and meeting strangers and all of that and like not you know no shade to anybody else who chooses to do that I'm just saying for like me that was like the big like uh aha you know so yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah. I feel like it's been similar with me too like What's great, though, is that Bumble now has this feature where you can say what your COVID comfortability is. Ooh, so you can say, like, oh, ooh, I, I like that. a person with a mask or, like, a no contact. Oh, wow. You know? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's thoughtful. I mean, that matters, yeah. like, you know, yeah. so that you're not, like, wasting somebody's time, you know, right, when it, it comes down shows, to that. Yeah. I feel like it also shows the value system too. Like, mm-hmm. do you, do you, do you actually? Right. Get, Are you, you just know? out here like, Hey, 
<laughs> like, like summer vacation, you know. like nah. <laughs> you know, and I feel like one thing that I will say is that this pandemic, and I think this goes with dating, but honestly, just in life in general, is just boundaries and like being yeah. able to like have yeah. healthy space and stuff, especially like I don't know, I feel like as a woman, like it's nice to like know like wow, there's like actually like you know, this is like becoming a thing where it's like, you know, keep a certain distance from, from people, you know? And so I feel like, you know, I feel like there are aspects of that, that I'm like, mm, this is kind of say, I'm like, yeah. with this a little bit. Yeah. I love what you said about boundaries because there are so yeah. many physical, emotional, mental boundaries that we don't mm-hmm. even map out before things get serious in dating, I feel like. And it's mm-hmm. like, what if we have a mechanism like that for things like physical touch in general? Like, mm-hmm. I, you know, it, just an array of things. Or like, I like to talk about this kind of stuff. Or like, I don't like to talk, I don't like to go here on a date. Or, you know, mm-hmm. just things like that. I just, I think that would be so useful if there's an actual mechanism for that besides having to have awkward conversations. But then again, I guess like we'll never really get away from having awkward conversations. <laughs> it's just, it's just yeah. so fascinating though that it, it took something like that. Yeah, to yeah. Like I think, you know, for me too, it's interesting to think about like older generations that are like, yeah. were not online before that are like, I don't know, maybe I do want to, like, be online and, like, find yeah. love. And, like, I just, I think that's awesome, you know? Yes, I'm like, get it, man. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. That's so fascinating to me, too, because, like, I feel like people will look at us at the side eye, with the side eye, and we're like, oh, yeah, I met someone online, um, like, maybe five mm-hmm. years ago. I don't even know. But now it's kind of, I know several people who got married to people who they met online you know it's just it's so interesting how that culture changes yeah 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 like for me like you know like I met my boyfriend online and I'm like it's been great for me so (laughs) I can't complain you know yeah 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 oh and and so another question I have is like how does this change because we talked about value systems right Mm -hmm. so like how does this change things like when we talk about race and we talk about family and what we want our families to look like in the future if we want to go that route or what Mm -hmm. things we want our families to value I think about that kind of stuff a lot like Mm -hmm. like now I do I didn't used to be that way but now I'm very much more thinking like oh do I want my child to have the qualities that I see in this person you Mm -hmm. know things like that how would you say that that you've been impacted by by that if you have been just like I mean I don't I don't know if my personal value system has changed in terms Mm -hmm. of the pandemic Mm -hmm. right I think for me the pandemic has more affected like the logistics of going about dating and relationships and all of that versus like my like day-to-day value system kind of thing if that makes sense Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah yeah I would say like for me um the biggest impact that it's had or one of the biggest impacts is like I'm now in a long distance relationship that was not a thing pre-pandemic and you know Mm. like work-wise like my boyfriend like had to like go move out of state and so that's been like the big thing and I think for me where value systems come in it's like okay how do I what matters the most in this relationship? Like you really start to get down to like the nitty gritty of things, you know, Mm. in terms of being in long distance, also in the middle of a pandemic, which is stressful, right? And like trying to give each other space and like, you know, but also like, even just like the creates, even things interesting, right? I would imagine that even for people that are like living together in the pandemic, right? Like just trying to find things to do and to like Mm. keep things fresh and like, I, yeah, I, it's a, it's, it can kind of compound on itself, I think. But um, I think that's when you go back to, okay, like, what are my core values? Like, what brought us together? Let's focus on that, you know? Because, you know, yeah, it's a, it's a lot in the news. I try to stay off social media with the pandemic because that is draining to the soul. <laughs> like, yeah, truly. Oh, my gosh. Like, listen. Yeah, like, I, like, will have friends or family that are like, did you see this article that's, like, the latest death toll or, like, the latest, like, I can't, girl, between that and, like, even the political stuff, I'm like, I I just choose to actively, like, I can't take all of that in all the time. And that goes back to boundaries, you know, like, 
Yeah. 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 And it's, it's so great that you're talking about that because I feel like something for, for me, cause, cause we've talked about this, I'm autistic and something that autistic people tend to struggle with is knowing what people's boundaries are because typically people won't say them out loud. They'll mm-hmm. just kind of expect people to know, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. which is hard. And I think now specifically I'm forced to be like, this is what I'm comfortable with. Are you comfortable with this? Um, which has been really great for me just as an exercise. And I think, mm-hmm. I think generally, like culturally, it's something that I would really hope that people keep around. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think, you know, I think communication is everything, right? Yeah, like, literally. it's literally. so simple, but like, we don't do it. <laughs> so, right. It's like, and then we sit and wonder why, well, she just don't understand me or he just don't blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, did you communicate like what you're... <laughs> Like we're exactly. not, people are mind readers, you know, and I think that there's this assumption that just because somebody is your friend or your partner or your pastor or whoever, that you're just going to automatically, they're just going to automatically know what you need and want in every little given moment. And I don't think that that's accurate. I think that you have absolutely to educate yeah. people on how to love you. you yeah, know? absolutely. I feel like yeah. people, there's this kind of this like rose colored glasses thing where people are like, when you fall in love, the person will meet all of your needs and they'll automatically know how. And it's like, no, that's not love mm-hmm. is, is to me the process of, of kind of getting in those nicks and crannies and being like, oh, these are the things that, that make me feel cared for, that make right. me feel valued in a right. partnership. Right, um, right. Yeah. yeah. It's like, it's, it's less than this picture perfect, not less than, but it's different than this picture perfect oh it'll automatically click in the place it'll just it'll just figure itself out yeah like I had I had a friend like this is some years ago (laughs) I had a friend and she was talking to me about love languages because she was like really getting into them for the first time and she's like yeah and I was just really into this and the guy that she was seeing at the time like she went and she was like yeah this is my love language blah 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 and he was literally said to her like it shouldn't take all of that you just Uh click and I'm like (laughs) oh I'm sorry. Like what? Like no, no, no. No, like that's not a thing. Like you know, everybody is different. And then here's the thing: not just we don't just have different personalities, but I also feel differently in different moments, right? Yeah. Like yeah. I just may what I was in the mood for yesterday, I may not be in the mood for today. You know, right? Like, and I think exactly. that there has to be communication, and that the other person has to be receptive to that communication, and like. You know, yeah. Yeah, and, and that also, also, like, not take it as an offense. Like, like if someone says they're not comfortable with something, doesn't mean they hate you. You know, it doesn't mm-hmm. mean that you, that you failed. And that, yeah. I feel like that's also a sensitive spot for a lot of people, and particularly um, for a lot of men, because I feel like a lot of men actually have this anxiety around relationships because mm. they fear they won't be able to meet the person's needs. Interesting. Interesting. You know, or their needs won't be met either, you know? Yeah. Yeah. I could see that. I feel like men are a lot more sensitive than like, <laughs> like they like wear on their sleeves a lot yeah. of the time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's interesting like, to kind of think about. Yeah. It's so funny too, because I, there's this show that I love on Netflix. It's Ooh. called Babies. And oh, it's I about like, okay. It's great. It's about like the developmental process of uh-huh. like like from the womb and like how they learn empathy and how they learn like right from wrong. And mm-hmm. so they're doing a bunch of studies on a bunch of babies. Um and one thing that they that they said in the episode just stuck with me so hard. And it was um a baby the love between a baby and their caretaker begins to grow when the baby trusts the caretaker to meet their need and the parent trusts the baby to tell them when a need is not being met. Mm, yeah, like, that's interesting. That like hit me to my core. I was like, oh my gosh, this is love. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's interesting to like to look at children and like, just to see how their whole little world develops. Like even in terms of how they even like say their first words and like what happens in their brain to even get to them to that like step. I feel like, yeah, kids are, kids are definitely interesting to kind of observe and like take from, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Especially in terms of, in terms of feeling cared for and like what makes mm-hmm. people feel cared for and how there's mm-hmm. every child is so different and how, you know, they just, I mean, they have different needs just like people yeah yeah like I, people. I think about like my niece and nephew they are literally like fire and ice <laughs> like 
click. Mm. You cannot do like, you know, this, the same, you know, act, you know, like act the same towards one as the other, just because they're not going to receive it the same, you know, mm-hmm. like they're two different. And like, here's the thing. They're like little ones. They're not even three yet. <laughs> so oh. <laughs> they're like baby babies, but their personalities are already like there, you know? And I think, you know, it, it just goes to show like how much, how important it is to pay attention to individuals and individual needs and be able to, to adjust and go with the flow, you know? Yes. And it's so interesting too, because you have to be at a point where you first know what you need and know how to communicate them effectively. And a lot of people struggle with that. Girl, listen, Mm -hmm. (laughs) self-awareness. That's Mm -hmm. a whole thing. I always say like, I feel like there's this like assumption that we're all experts on ourselves. Like, yeah. And I'm like, mm-hmm, I don't know about that. Like, everybody has blind spots. <laughs> yes. You know, everybody has blind spots. And that doesn't make you like a, a bad person or a dumb person. Like, it just means that you're like, there are things about yourself that you probably would not have known if somebody hadn't told you or you weren't in a certain context or environment to learn those things about yourself. And so for me, I always feel like, you know, yeah, I think the more I can be self-aware, the most I, the more I can be honest, emotionally honest about what it, where it is that I'm at and what it is that I need. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think that that's important for, for any relationship really, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Cause, cause one thing that we reiterate in preschool is, you know, tell, tell us what you need. Like, cause sometimes what kids will do is they'll make a noise be like, mm, or they like have a fit and like, I can't, I can't give you what you need. If you yeah. Don't tell me. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, yeah. I could, I could see that. That's a, a thing. Again, I'm thinking about my my niece. Ah. <laughs> it's a hump yeah. to get over for sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, and, and I know we've talked about this like amongst each other, but I think one of the things that was scaring me about relationships because we know I've never been in one in a long term relationship, but the thing that was like frightening to me was being in a situation where I was in a relationship. And I was like, oh, now I actually have to do this well. Like now, like, now there's a person who has expectations of me. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, I I feel like that feeling is like, first of all, you feel that in, I think, a lot of different areas of life, right? The first thing that came to mind was just theater. Hello, like, Mm -hmm. casting the show. And it's like, well, you're on now. Like, (laughs) you're professional. Let's see what you got. (laughs) And I think that, um, I think that kind of goes back to imposter syndrome, right? Like, Mm -hmm. you know, even in terms of relationships, like you can have this, this thing of like, this thing is just so like, oh, I don't know. Like, I don't want to break it. I don't want to. Yes. Yeah. 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 And it's like, and then like, I think realizing that you're not the only one that like, has your same fears or has your same like shortcomings whatever and then once you like can contextualize it and realize that you're not just like on some like lonely man's island Mm -hmm. you know like you can be like okay like let me give myself some grace here like I, I, I get to make mistakes right like I get to learn and I get to grow and here's the thing like when you're in a relationship with a loving person you know whether that's a a romantic relationship or otherwise, like people are understanding, like people are not like, well, girl, you didn't call me yesterday, like you said. So like people aren't that, (laughs) Mm -hmm. I feel like at least my friends aren't like, (laughs) yeah, you know? And so I feel like it's kind of like the same thing where it's like people are like, they are here for you. People are rooting for you. Just like casting directors are rooting for you, you know? Exactly. That's so real. Yeah. Yeah. So in that same vein, do you think that politics and how things have kind of heated up now particularly have impacted how people go about dating now yeah. and in the future? Or do you think do you or do you think, and I was thinking about this earlier, is it the same and like the people who haven't had to think about it now have to think about it? Like, I don't know. I feel like I mean, here's the thing. I can only speak from like my perspective as like a black <laughs> woman like you know whatever like I feel like for me it's it's hard to say because on the one hand I want to say 
in terms of like it feels like the the pulse of the black community in particular like we've been saying this stuff <laughs> like we've yeah, been yeah, yeah, complaining yeah. so it's not like we're like having some new like oh my gosh and now we're seeing like <laughs> i think yeah. black people have already been there <laughs> in terms of black issues and so i think that we are i definitely think that there's more of an edge right in society all the way around i would say where I think it's harder for people to even communicate or see each other as human. Yeah. I hate to say, like, I feel like that's more so of what I'm seeing. Um, but I feel like I would say, generally speaking for me, like, you know, those, those are things that I would always be mindful of. Like, you know, like, are you a racist? Like, let's just, let's just put right. it out there, bro. Let like, yeah, like, yes, I, that's that's kind of hard to say. I'd be interested in like a poll, like yeah. you know, like in the U.S., like how what were your thoughts on dating before the pandemic, and I mean, and before pol- you know all this current political you know stuff. So mm-hmm. I don't know, girl. It's it's so wild because like you know what I really want though. I really want I'm putting in the atmosphere ABC Network putting in the atmosphere. I want a dating show with all the people who broke up with people because they were Trump supporters. I want a dating show with them. I want them to thrive. Uh oh. Oh well. Um. You know I'd be here for it. I'm here for the tea. <laughs> 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 yeah. I think I think we're also living in a time of call out of like call out culture. Right. Oh yeah. You know. So I think the time for like being a closet racist <laughs> is <laughs> like like that's over that's over yeah. and done right like and like I'm talking about race like that's just one issue right like right um yeah I yeah yeah I, I don't know I I hope I hope that like we get to a, a place of like where the edge kind of goes yeah on a little bit just because like I said it's exhausting to like constantly be in that like everything is political I mean everything is kind of political but at the same time like I can't like if I sat and thought about all of the political issues that are like that like really like are triggers for me like whatever I would be pressed all day like I wouldn't get anything done like literally absolutely yeah yeah I it's it's can be exhausting because like you know you live it and then you talk about it and then you go back to living it after talking about it and it's Man, it's wild. I feel like for me, on um, dating apps specifically, I definitely look for people who are, well, because I'm a Christian, so, like, that complicates things. So I always look for, like, I just, I just, I realize that I'm someone who I can disagree with you on certain things. But in terms of, like, basic level human, humanity, like, I just, mm-hmm. because uh, it's so dicey because some would argue that's a, a testament of someone's character. It's a testament of what their values are or like what they value more than other things. And, and I just, I think I've come to terms with the fact that like, I cannot be with someone who values capitalism or like, or a capitalist system over human life or over the well being of other people. Yes. That part, you know? that part right there. Yes. It's, it's a lot. And I think this goes back and goes back to like self-awareness, self insight to say, okay, let's be real. What are my triggers? Like, yeah. is this particular issue a trigger for me? And if my partner, who I am, like, the most close with, the most intimate with, is saying stuff and is about stuff that is hidden on my triggers, like, this is toxic at this point. Like, I can't, I can't do it, you know? Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because, like, I even, I was reading the study on, how much time you spend with different people in your different phases of life. Mm -hmm. And it was saying how around, you know, after like age 25 and up, you spend 80% of your time with your significant other and everybody else is in the 20% range. And it's like, so that, this is, this is the person you're with most (laughs) of the time. (laughs) Yeah. 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 Yeah, That's a, that's a thing. I think, you know, yeah it, yeah I, I and it's it's not to say that like yeah I think you just have to be aware of your triggers and just be honest about it you know that that doesn't mean that you know you're cold-hearted and you're just like scary all the time whatever it's just about being honest right um, yeah and I remember we had this conversation over the phone about um people who put apolitical on their dating profiles I 
and how like my my inclination was to be like y'all just don't want to say you're conservative <laughs> or y'all just like y'all just don't want to say it to me <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. I don't know though, uh, but then you you also like you made an excellent point too about that, and I don't know, like you were saying how people who live in a bubble will continue to live in a bubble when it is comfortable, you know? And, yeah, 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 yeah. I uh, definitely think that there are um, obviously. I think that I I tend not to lump people into very broad categories and I yeah. try to take people as individuals and where they're at you know I certainly think that there are some people that are like smile in your face and then like I'm going to a clan meeting <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, like I think those people exist like literally you are literally a wolf in sheep's clothing mm -hmm. um and I think that there are other people who through their environment and their culture, you know, and all of that, like they just are comfortable in that, that bubble. Right. And like, they don't have, they don't know a lot of people to pop that bubble. Right. Now here's the thing. I don't think that it's on other people to educate you. I think that yeah. that should be your own, especially you grown. Like, I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, I can understand how somebody would end up being that way if they lived in a certain you know a yeah. certain bubble you know yeah absolutely and it man it just like thinking about things like that and dating is just such a mosh posh for me of how much empathy I'm willing to offer how much space I'm willing to give someone and mm -hmm. like how I'm will how I how much I can handle as a person and as a mm -hmm. woman being you know no, let alone a black woman being in the educator seat a lot of the time and just yeah. knowing, you know, again, with boundaries, mm -hmm. that's a tricky thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a lot. I mean, here's the thing. Like there are a lot of black women that like don't date outside of our race. Cause like, mm -hmm. we don't want to deal with like even having to have the conversation about race and about politics and about mm -hmm. all of that stuff, you know? Um, yeah. I, I, I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. It's so, it's so wild too, because I like, even I went to predominantly white schools most of my life. There were only mm -hmm. three years of my life where I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, and it was always me trying to, I guess, I think I viewed white, white men as like the epitome of being valued. And so if I, if a white guy liked me, I was like, Oh, Oh, finally. <laughs> and that's toxic. That's, that's yeah. toxic. Right there. Yeah. 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 You know? Yeah. And I've had to like really deconstruct that in the past, like, honestly, like the past like, couple years, I had to be like, oh, I was associating being a, a white man showing me affection as being valuable, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. as a woman. It's like, even though it's not like a direct and deliberate thing, like that mm -hmm. kind of like falls into like the category of internalized racism. Yeah. That yeah. you don't even are like fully aware that it is in the moment, right? Just because of the culture that we grow, we grow up in, you know? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, that, that definitely for me, like took some undoing and like re-education to mm -hmm. just value all black everything, you know? Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, and, yeah. To, and to really celebrate that, like, like, no, really, I'm rooting for everybody black. Like, truly, truly. <laughs> like, like, I don't think you heard me. I'm rooting for black. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. Like, yeah. It, it takes some, it takes some, some time to like, to get there. But like, I feel the most, just the most proud, the most, um, aware and sensitive to black issues that maybe like you know 10 year old Brittany like didn't even fully comprehend because I was a kid you know mm -hmm. and like the you know especially being in you know going back to theater like being in theater and like my role models and stuff like they were white yeah the cartoons that I like they were white you know and so yeah. it takes time to undo that you know absolutely and you said yeah. something really powerful there about images and image because like I remember the question I would always get asked as a young actress was 
who or what roles do you want to play right what roles do you want to play whose career do you want to emulate mm -hmm. and it's like okay well i gotta pick a three so and none of them actually fit what i would call you know my aesthetic or like none of them actually feel like me mm -hmm. but i have three to pick from so mm -hmm. it's either pick from those three who aren't like you or find someone in a different body who's more like you and so then that i think contributes to that to that internalized racism of only seeing those models as as something that is you know close to who you are or something that's even yeah. valuable yeah yeah man it's mm -hmm. a, it's a lot i um you know and I, I think that's why like now like i fight so hard to do the projects that i do because i'm like mm -hmm. representation does matter and i love mm -hmm. that the people that are always like it doesn't matter you know i don't see color and this uh -huh. isn't children don't know and you know children are innocent and you're trying to but and i'm like you can't tell me what it's like to be a black little girl period right. and let me tell and like proof that children do know we we literally talked about different colors of people's skins in class at preschool. At preschool, mm. they're like two years old, and they're like, "Oh, that person's skin looks like mine." And someone was like, "Oh, I don't see anyone whose skin looks like mine." They know. They, they know. It. They know. And here's the thing. And then you treat them other. I saw I saw a video. I don't I don't remember the exact context of it, but they were in line. I don't know if it was like Disneyland or whatever it was, but these parents were in line with their kids and the kids were dressed up as like Disney princesses, all kinds of stuff, whatever. Mm -hmm. And this white lady turns to this like uh, black child and is like, you can't dress up as Elsa because she's white. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> like, who says that to a child? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> like, like woman go home go home <laughs> drink some tea like, like i i can't like i literally can't um but yeah girl that's the whole thing <laughs> and it's yeah the whole thing and i think too um like okay i don't know if you've seen bridgerton i haven't watched it yet okay yet. well then we'll t i will talk about it then um but um okay. i think that it's especially important to show black women on screen in healthy loving relationships mm -hmm. you know and dark-skinned black women for that matter because what i what i will typically see is like the racially ambiguous woman and yes if you're black you're black if you say you're black i'm gonna believe you right mm -hmm. um because that's what you are that's your identity mm -hmm. um but the thing that ends up happening is people who are racially ambiguous or appear to be racially ambiguous um end up fitting in those roles that are specifically for black women and then what happens is the racially ambiguous story or the mixed race person story doesn't get told at all mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. they're filling another slot right right um and i kind of went on a tangent there but i'm really just trying to illustrate the idea of showing uh, people being shown on screen and how that translates to what you value from a societal standpoint yeah yeah we're we're influenced by pop culture. Like we're mm -hmm. not that evolved to right. like, oh, I'm not influenced, but like everybody is. <laughs> like, yes. unless you are like Amish and like you are like, you live in a community <laughs> that is literally isolated from society. Like you're influenced by it, even subconsciously, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. I mean, it, it, advertising works, right? And there's ads yeah. that we, we advertise and we market different images and different ideas you know and that that does play that does play a huge impact on on mm -hmm. culture and society you know and, and and you as an individual and like how you see the world you know yes absolutely mm -hmm. like and and what what you view relationships to be mm -hmm. and in that respect what you view a healthy relationship to be Oh, yes. Yes. You know? Remember, it was like trending. It was like trending on all over social media. The whole, um, what's it? The Joker and what's the girl? Oh, uh, oh, uh, woo, what's her name? Uh, hey, Harley Quinn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it was like relationship goals. Mm, like, why? I, unless it was a joke. <laughs> Maybe it was a joke that I was not in on. <laughs> like, okay <laughs> but that was a mess i'm like mm -hmm, this ain't it this is not mm -hmm. it <laughs> yeah truly like like just so much and i feel like we we glamorize toxicity in relationships and honestly mm -hmm. to be honest relationships are like a majority of them that i see are toxic like because i feel like we're like 
we get in this state where it's better to be with someone who's toxic than to be alone. Mm -hmm. And, you know, something that I promised myself very recently was um, that if I do not feel as good around someone as I feel being alone, (laughs) it's not Yes, it's not even worth your time. It's don't waste my time. Like, (laughs) what are we here for? Yeah, that's, that's a whole thing. I think that we, like, when it comes to toxicity, whether it's just, like, as an individual or in relationships, Mm -hmm, I think that we get used to, like, there's a certain level of toxicity that's, like, normalized and, like, Mm -hmm. you're just comfortable in it. Like, this is all I've ever seen. This is how my family is, this is what my family is like. This is what, you know, my closest Mm -hmm. friends are like, you know, and everybody's toxic and it's like, you know, it's like the fish doesn't know that he's wet <laughs> swimming in yeah. the ocean. Like, <laughs> yeah, it, it can take a lot, I think, to kind of undo those things. You know, I think that there's a sense of like, just because something is normal, that that means it's therefore good and healthy. Mm. You know, yeah. just because you can function and you're not like rocking in the corner, you know, like bawling your eyes out all day. And like, you, yeah, you may be, have like a relatively normal life and be able to do the stuff that you got to do. But in reality, <laughs> a lot of that stuff could actually be, you know, not healthy. Yeah, absolutely. And something else that I think that I've, I've recognized from that is like, like if there's a dynamic where a guy's like super jealous or like hyper masculine mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. I don't hate masculinity. I just hate toxic masculinity because I think right. a balance of masculinity right. is, 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 is useful and healthy. But I think when it becomes about like a power struggle and about domination, then that is like the red flags are growing up because, because I, I remember, um, I don't know if I saw this person like on TikTok or wherever, but um, she was talking about how, her, her boyfriend would like, like, like the way that he would act jealous was like, he would get mad and like yeah. it, it was public, like outburst. And he was like, she was like, mm-hmm. oh my God, like that means he cares. <laughs> like oh. that's not, you don't need that. Yeah. Need um, and I think a lot yeah. of people like, and it hasn't died out either. Like it hasn't died out with this generation, this upcoming generation, because you know, bless her heart, Millie Bobby Brown was talking about how um, the main character of You, I don't know if you've watched You. No, I've never seen it. Oh, oh, it's actually real good. But, um, oh, okay. Yeah, um, but the main character of You is basically, uh, I think, I, I don't know the log- logistical term, but I think it's a sociopath. And so he kind of, hope I'm not, is it okay that I'm kind of spoiling it? For you? Oh, it's fine, it's fine, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, but it's like <laughs> you pick on very, you pick up very quickly, that's what it is. Um, but everything that he does is like in the name of love and because he cares so much about the person he's idolizing. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's like, we think things like that are coveted, like they're coveted. Um, <laughs> something else that I was thinking about was the fact that our idea of even what's sexy or what's sexual mm. is mm-hmm. emotionally cut off emotionally distant but the things that are not sexy or not um something that like exudes passion are like pleasantness or or kindness mm-hmm. you know that's like, yes. turn us on. yes 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 um, that that's a really interesting point because i was thinking today i'm like you know one of the things that like in terms of men the things that i find really sexy is humility like I love a humble guy I love an empathetic man (laughs) I love even if you can't empathize I'm gonna need you to at least like sympathize like those things are like so like underrated because here's the thing everybody is always like I feel like confidence is the sexiest thing or when he works out and he got all this whatever and not to say that all that stuff isn't hot but to me I'm like when I think about the, what, what, what's in your heart? Like, who are you at your core? And the thing that really like turns me on is like, yeah, a guy that's like humble, a guy that's like sees other people. Right. And like, can a guy that can own up to his mistakes, that's hot. (laughs) Okay. And listen, listen, very rare because I, I feel like we live in a culture that's always like, let me put up this representative you know, so that I can woo you or whatever. And mm-hmm. while that may be effective, at a certain point, it's like, okay, that's cool. But can you be, uh, can you be real? Can you, you know, like, I like was thinking about like Paul in the Bible, who's like, I boast in my weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Like, like, that is such a like, Paul was hot. Like, that was hot. That was hot. <laughs> Tell you 
tell you what, I'm gonna just say it. Tell you what. <laughs> that's so real. And yeah, I think that has been the most visible change for, for myself internally because mm. You know, I used to be attracted to the one that was like clearly like less emotionally available. Mm -hmm. And I think the most tangible shift for me has been the fact that I am now attracted to people who are more emotionally vulnerable or more emotionally present or who know how to support me um, with, you know, kindness or, Mm -hmm. you know, care. And I just, that is the most visible shift for me. And I'm just, I'm so grateful for that because I think for a long time, I tried to tell myself that that wasn't what I wanted. Mm, you know, I tried to mm-hmm. tell myself, oh, I don't need that. I'm not needy. I don't need any of that. Um, I don't need someone wow. to hug me random. I don't, I don't Ugh, want that. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, like I, I would tell these lies to myself because I was just mm-hmm. afraid of wanting that. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and I think, you know, especially for women, for us to actually like be honest and like be and like own what it is that we need and not back down from those things like just in life in general but like in this instance in a relationship because I think when you step back and think about it it's like okay all those other things are nice but what's gonna sustain us for the long term like if that's what your goal is and that's what your desire is what's gonna keep Mm -hmm. us what's gonna keep this thing going what what do we come back to at the end of the day and I, yes. I can't, I, I can't, especially for me, like, I like, I think, you know, we're both type four personalities, which are more, yes. the, you know, very, yes, like, emotional, like, <laughs> we like vulnerability, we like to be honest, you know, all those things. And it's like, to be with somebody that is emotionally cut off, and, you know, isn't able to be there for you emotionally, is really, really difficult. Right. And like, Mm -hmm. you know, obviously there are pros and cons to different personality types, but I think fundamentally at the end of the day, like if you just like, if you just don't care about me emotionally and you just walking around with your peacock feathers, I can't do anything with that. (laughs) Like, like truly what am I going to do with that? What am I going to do with that? It's so funny because man, like there's that phrase, like, what do I do with that? It, for me, that has just, that is the thing that has been like the nail in the coffin for a lot of situations where I was like, do I even want to pursue anything with this person? Because here's what they're actually offering me. Like Mm -hmm. here's on paper what they're actually offering me, Mm -hmm. you know, that they can't respond to my text messages or that. And like in a timely manner, like that means something differently to everybody, but just showing respect, you know, Mm -hmm. or that they can't communicate what they're feeling or even that they haven't sifted out their feelings because Mm -hmm. that's okay too. You know, yeah. it's okay yeah. to be like, I'm not in a place where I can offer right. um, what you need, right. or I am mm-hmm. not in a place where I even know what I need. You know, it's yeah. okay yeah. to communicate that. Yeah, yeah, and I, I think that's, you know, again, like, it just goes back to communication. Like, at mm-hmm. least you acknowledging, like, hey, I'm not in the space to, like, really go there right now, right? Mm-hmm. Or, or I don't have the right words. Let me go think about this and I'm gonna come back to you and we can have a conversation. Like, yeah. that, like you said, like that I can respect. I can do something with that. The other thing I'll say is too, I think, you know, as a woman and like for women in general, I feel like a lot of us are, you know, well, one, Black women, I think Black women are just tired of like giving so much. Yeah. Like yeah. we just want equity. We want like reciprocity in relationships and I think it's about time it's about time that that we get that you know and I think for women in general the the era and the ages of like well you know you need to marry a good man so that you can have a roof over your head and like you know think about you know people always say like oh those relationships lasted so long but it's like how many options did women have back then yeah that's the thing the options what were they you know yeah yeah and it's it's like today like women women can do so much for ourselves now that mm-hmm. it's like okay i don't need you for this superficial stuff anymore not to say that that stuff is like you know you know ab- obviously everybody needs to work and all that stuff whatever but at the end of the day what i need you for is more emotional than it is all of this other stuff yes absolutely like and that, that's the thing that I really had to be honest with myself, like you said, about what I actually needed. And mm-hmm. for me, like long term, because, you know, I, I, I don't necessarily just date to date, like mm-hmm. I date with a purpose mm-hmm. and looking to like what, what kind of fam, like what I wanted my family to grow up with, like mm-hmm. what do I want my kids to see and emulate? 
You know, mm-hmm. what kind of character do I want them to have? Mm-hmm. Um, those are things that, I mean, as I started working with preschool, those are things that I really started honing in on and being like, oh yeah, this dynamic would not work with me. Or like, I don't, like that stubbornness. And like, yes, no one's perfect, but like just this basic level, what qualities do you want your children to emulate? You know, Mm -hmm. that to me just like really came into focus because I'm someone who does want children, you know, you might not want to, but I'm someone who does. Um, And so that just really came into focus for me just working with children. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's something to think about. Like, you know, what kind of, what kind of person are you, if I'm not around, what are you teaching our kids? Yes. You know, like what, what are they gleaning from you? And like, I I think, yeah, it's, it's funny. Like, I, I think I always, you know, like for same here, like I want to have a family, I want to have kids. And like, I always tell friends, I'm like, I talk about my kids as if they're already here, you know, and like (laughs) in my head, honestly, Shemaya, like in my head, I'm like, if I like, if for whatever reason, God doesn't see fit for me to have children naturally, like, you know, I would look into adoption. I may do that anyway. Like, I like really want to be a mom. I want to have that experience. But it's also important for me that my partner is somebody that I can raise children with. And like, I love the values that he has. And, you know, yeah, that we can give that to our kids. That's, that's, yeah, it's like, you know, I can't wait to marry the man and be like, okay, now what kind of parent you gonna be? Like, (laughs) like, (laughs) Like you in it now. (laughs) You in it, sis. Yeah that's so real it's so funny too because like like again like the reshaping of the, my values has mm-hmm. been drastic like it's been dra- not not just in terms of you know politics but in terms mm-hmm. of you know how how do I want them to talk to me mm-hmm. you know how do I want to be spoken to mm-hmm. um and like for me because I, I don't know if I told you this but I was in an abuse of friendship for mm. a couple years, I was at wow. a new school, and I was I was always a new kid. For for about eight years, I was always a new kid. Mm-hmm. Um, and this person would tell me every single day, "Shamaya, you're ugly and you're stupid." And I want to fight. I want to fight. No, like, <laughs> I need please. to fight. <laughs> no. Girl, I'm so sorry that you like went through that. It's okay, but it's like it's just things like that, and that that was part of my autism, not understanding those like what those cues meant. Because to mm-hmm. me, I had never had a friend before, sure. and so I was like, "Oh, this is what friends do, right? This is this mm-hmm. must be this is friendship." You know, yeah. I, I had no idea, right, right. Um, and so really, like a base level, like how I want to be spoken to, you know, how just yes. things like that have just really come into focus to me or for me lately um that it's really just astounding and you know maybe it is because of the pandemic you know miss pandemic making us sit in our couches and look at ourselves okay and you know listen people are people are going to therapy they're trying to figure it out they're like wait a minute Mm -hmm. stuff is not okay (laughs) Right. Right, right, right i think you know yeah and i think yeah the the pandemic is really it really has forced people to kind of be honest about where it where it is that we're at what it is that we need where do we need to grow and like I think we're seeing more people reach out to therapists for that reason because you know yeah it's it's something about stress that will force you to, to like it'll shake things up and you'd be like okay wait a minute we need to do an assessment an yes. evaluation needs to happen here literally um, yeah I but I you know I re- relate on some level in terms of you know navigating relationships and realizing you know it's okay for me to set boundaries healthy boundaries for myself it's okay for me to speak up for myself um and i think you know yeah especially especially when you've been you know in a relationship with somebody for a long time or it's family hello family mm-hmm. that's a whole thing that's a whole thing <laughs> that's a whole thing right and it's like well wait a minute it's like no this isn't this isn't right Lord, like there's something is not right here. And I, I think that yeah. um, it takes, sometimes it just takes time to like come to those realizations. And I think that, you know, my, my hope is that every year I learn more and more about who I am, what it is that I need. Um, mm-hmm. And again, and that may ebb and flow a little bit from season to season in my life, you know? Yeah. 
Yeah, and that's the thing too is that I forget. It's like you said, like you can make mistakes and you can change. Mm-hmm. You know, that's mm-hmm. that's that's that's. I think, I think one of the things too is I don't like situations where I don't know what's going to happen. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's funny because you might not think that about me knowing me because I, I like to like. You know, I I kind of take risks. Like I I, I just kind of start things when I don't mm-hmm. have, um, like like if I if I feel like something is right, then I kind of just do it. Mm-hmm. Um, but when it comes to relationships, I think that's a really anxious like sore spot for me mm-hmm. because I don't like mm-hmm. not knowing how things are going to turn out. Yeah. Um, in that yeah. respect, it's so it's. Ooh. Yeah, girl. I think, like I said, I think I've said this to you before, but I think that's where for me, like, I like have to come back to my faith. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, and even like, even beyond faith, like having good friends and like family members that I can like lean into and be like, okay, what do you think? It's what do you feel? What do you think about this? So Mm -hmm. then it's like, okay, if I have the support of family and friends, like, especially when it comes to relationships and like, and all of that, like that can be a helpful source, right? Like it could also swing the other way. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Depending on the situation. <laughs> but I, I think that um, for me, like leaning into the people that God has like put in my life and like going back to just like prayer and like, you know, I, you know, like, I, you know, like I admire even for you, even if it is outside of dating that you do have that, like, you know what, I'm going to do this thing. Like, let's go, let's do it. Like, I'm kind of the opposite. Like, I feel like, <laughs> like, I literally will like take 10 years to like, okay, but I have to have this. And I like, have to, then the pretty people will be like, okay, Brittany, where's the thing? Where's the, this thing that you said you're And I'm like, I don't have other pieces. Like, oh. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah yeah that's that's a that's a whole thing but um yeah girl takes time I think to to ease into things and I think too like like I said before like just being kind to yourself right Mm -hmm. and giving yourself that grace to say like okay I can move at my pace like I'm not being rushed by society or friends or some invisible timeline in my head like Mm -hmm. yeah you know Yeah. And I I think, I think the thing too is knowing and understanding that everyone is capable of being toxic. You know, everyone is capable Mm -hmm. of contributing to that energy. Mm -hmm. And like, I think it's so funny because I think when we think of toxicity, we automatically think of, you know, a domination or consumption Mm -hmm. of something. Mm -hmm. Um, But what can also be all consuming is like too much not empathy, but just being someone being smothered, someone mm-hmm. not knowing boundaries and not respect or not respecting boundaries in terms mm-hmm. of how much they are kind of laying on to somebody. Yes, 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 yes. I think I think that's a whole thing, and I think that you know, like you said, I think everybody has the potential to be toxic and to lean into those things. And I think, mm-hmm. I mean, shoot, I feel like that goes back to like you know, from a Christian perspective, like sin and like <laughs> talking mm-hmm. about that. And I, I think it, it does take, you know, at least being self-aware and like, okay, where am I at? And that person being honest and, and introspective and saying like, hey, this is, this is where I'm at. These are the things that I struggle with. So at least then you kind of both know you're starting, you're reading from the same sheet of music, right? Like yeah. you're both kind of on the same field of like what to be aware of and what to kind of work on individually and what to be aware of in terms of the other person yeah and and it goes back to too you can't know what those what those sore spots are unless you know yourself you know unless you Mm -hmm. know those things about yourself and have taken the time Mm -hmm. to to really think about how you may have impacted other people yeah you know yeah yeah and then unfortunately I, i do think that sometimes it does take like stubbing your toe or like yeah whatever yeah. to like get it and be like wow like I really like screwed this up like mm-hmm. <laughs> let me go back to the drawing board here <laughs> um yeah and I, I think that's that's where like like I said before like being gracious with myself and like being yeah. with somebody who is gracious with me and vice versa yes yes and yes and someone who can make space for that too because mm-hmm. I think I think some of it is as well maybe you know people come into situations with their own traumas you know maybe Mm -hmm. someone 
in that situation has been through something that you might put them through again, Mm -hmm. you know? And so Mm -hmm. at that point, they're kind of like, I don't want to do this again. I'm out, which is totally valid. And I, I think it's about finding someone who can make space for the things that you need. Right. Um, because right. we're not, like, again, we're not going to all need the same things and we can't right. all make space for the same things. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. I think this, this, like, for me is like, you know, I'm always like team therapy. Everybody go to therapy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we love it. We love it. <laughs> because I feel like it just sets you up really nicely to have your best shot at being your best self. Yes. Right. Um, yeah, I feel like we make it out to be deeper than what it really is, you mm-hmm. know? And, like, in reality, it's just a conversation or a series of conversations mm-hmm. with your therapist and with yourself. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. You know, like... You talk to yourself. You better talk. <laughs> Listen. Yeah, I feel like that because, yeah, you, you get tools that you didn't have before. You get the insight that you didn't have. Um you know, and yeah, and here's the, here's the thing, like, for me, like I said, I'm an emotional person, and, like, my, like, like, big thing is, like, I can overshare, like, with my partner, and, like, be, like, too (laughs) emotional all the time, and I'm, like, okay, I've had to learn how to regulate that, and, like, just the idea that, like, my boyfriend, or my mother, or my friends, like, they're not my therapist and they're not yeah. God also like, you know, and so I think that there has to be a space that you have for yourself to do that inner work, you know, that is, you know, yeah, just like for just a private thing. So you can do that work so that when you are with your friends, yes, you can be emotionally honest, but you can also, again, have those healthy boundaries, you know, and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I think, Yeah, and, like, going back to the thing about um, dating apps, I think that people thought boundaries were kind of, like, only brought into conversation when something traumatic has happened Mm -hmm. or, you know, only when something has Mm -hmm. gone really wrong. But boundaries are an essential way of life. Like, it's not just something you bring into the picture if you've been abused or et cetera. You know, Mm -hmm. it's it's part of the whole picture. Yeah. Let's just normalize it, you know? Yeah. Yeah, and I I feel like there is, there's just so much, much, especially in the Black community, like, there's so much trauma that we're all collectively going through and have been going through. Like, it's, it's important for me to have quality, healthy relationships, because there's, there's enough out there in the world (laughs) to deal with, (laughs) like, I need to be on top of stuff, stuff has got to be regulated in my own personal life, you know, because otherwise yes. you would go insane. Literally, yes, absolutely. <laughs> like, there, there's so much out there, and I think something, too, that has been so useful for me just in talking about anti-racism and, you know, anti-oppression mm-hmm. is the aspect of healing and how integral that is to the process. You know, we can't mm-hmm. appear at a place where we're ready to change, we're ready to see someone that's human if we're not first empathetic with ourselves and we don't we don't see you know we have to see ourselves as worthy of change as Mm -hmm. worthy of transformation Mm -hmm. you know yeah yeah it's it's a it's a whole thing and I, I think more recently I've really become more aware of like I said just like the collective trauma that Mm -hmm. we've been going through as a black community and what the repercussions of that are in my own personal life and then even in my loved one's life right like Mm -hmm. if i'm close to somebody like that could have an effect on me i'm like wow my brother is a black man you know and if he comes back and is like i have this experience or even if he didn't have some traumatic you know obvious obviously traumatic experience i still can have sympathy for him because I'm looking on the on the news and I'm like seeing all of these stories, right? So even just yeah. by just by approximation, I'm feeling that, right? Yeah. And so it's like we carry, and then I don't know if that's a black woman thing too, but we just like we carry not just our own <laughs> traumas and our own like stuff. We carry everybody else's stuff. Yes, absolutely. Which yeah. is why I'm like, I need to be with someone who can make space for me. Like mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. I need to come home and talk about, oh, white people be doing this, and then not be like, 
you know, I need to just hear me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> Yeah, yeah, girl, that's a whole thing. Like being able to be honest about racial issues, especially in an interracial relationship, Mm -hmm. you know, with a white person, right? Like Mm -hmm. that, you know, you have to have such an amount of trust there to be vulnerable, right? Because like there are going to be times where I'm like, listen, today is not the day. Like, yeah, I'm. (laughs) <laughs> and I need you to not take this personally. I need you to emotionally social distance. Right, <laughs> so, right. Like, <laughs> I need you to emotionally distance from this conversation right. that's about to happen. Um, yeah, yeah. And in order for me to feel your support, but also, you know, not not take it personally. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because like I was also I was in this conversation on Clubhouse and the question was and I, I talk to you about Clubhouse all the time, but one of the questions in a chat room was, um, do black women expect too much? And <laughs> like are mm. we are we expecting too much? Mm. Um and one man on there, one panelist, he he's a white man who I believe he's British, but uh, you know, from the UK somewhere, and he's married to a black woman. Um, Mm -hmm. And he said something really, really poignant. He said, as a black man who's married to, or as a white man who's married to a black woman, I have to understand that there are some conversations I just cannot be a part of. Like there are some that just are not for me. Mm -hmm. And that is something Mm -hmm. I have to be okay with. You know, sometimes they're just going to be talking about how white people begin on their nerves. And listen. Listen, like, that's a whole thing. Like, I remember I even have a conversation with my boyfriend about, like, having kids that are at least half Black, and if they present Black and look Black, like, they're going to be dealing with these issues. And I told him, I was like, it's important for me, for my kids to have Black men in their lives, you know, Mm -hmm. to be able, if I have a Black son, like, I want him to be able to have positive Black male role models. And that's no shade to him. Mm -hmm. right it just is a it's a reality right it goes back to representation and being able to see yourself in in the world because especially like again if you present that way the world is going to come at him based on how he looks yeah like absolutely yeah and and the thing the thing that the only thing that frustrates me about um when i see black children in families where either there there are no other black people in that family or there's mm-hmm. like one or two the only thing that frustrates me is when the parents don't believe in institutional racism and it's like you're raising a child who will be impacted tremendously by institutional racism and in some respects you're putting that child in danger by not by not understanding the context in which they live they're going to live their life you know yeah. That, that's a really hard thing to know exists in the world mm-hmm. because at the end of the day, their parents are the ones with the most direct influence on their lives. And, mm-hmm. you know, my prayer is just that in some other way, <laughs> God, mm-hmm. God gives them other people in their life that yeah. can, it, that can show their children a holistic perspective right mm-hmm. um, rather than just whatever it is that their parents are are saying you know and here's the thing you can say you colorblind all day and you don't see you know you whatever that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist right this, like, it's, you're not the world like you're not america <laughs> like i'm still black still brown yeah. girl right here <laughs> like, for real <laughs> So as we're coming to a close in this episode, um, I just want to ask one final question for Mm -hmm. the topic of discussion. So what do you think is a takeaway for you personally in terms of current events and romantic relationships? And what do you think is the model that we should kind of be going by at this point? I think that for me, the big thing is knowing again those boundaries and knowing when to unplug (laughs) from everything that's happening especially as a black woman um i think that that like i said i think that that can have can weigh on your soul and like that will affect how you show up in all of your relationships Mm -hmm. right and so i think and then also having a partner that is patient as you go through the ebbing and flowing of politics and the pandemic and, and vice versa, you know? Um, 
and so yeah I think I think that that was kind of where I've been at and then like I said just continuing to do the work continuing to have that space where I can go and like work through some of these things and Mm -hmm. you know like having those safe spaces oh my gosh safe spaces for black people oh my gosh yes that's necessary. A whole, like, so necessary. That's a whole thing. Um, yeah, like I, I think that it's important to have those safe spaces, um, whether it's a faith community or a black community, you know, specifically mm-hmm. like a you know, like as a woman, right? Like yeah. you know, finding whatever your space your safe space is, um, so that you can stay in touch with what matters and like yeah, your joy at the end of the day, because your joy is your strength. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. I think, I think for me, it's something similar as well as like, knowing when a situation is too much for you and knowing that it's okay mm-hmm. for it to be too much for you. Mm-hmm. And it, that just because it is too much for you doesn't mean it'll be too much for someone else. But knowing right. where your prerogatives are and knowing what your, your personal boundaries are, you know, and, mm-hmm. and I feel like a lot of people see boundaries potentially as, as a punishment. But boundaries are really to keep you safe and to keep you healthy you know mm-hmm. and yeah and I think that they should be more normalized absolutely so yeah I totally I concur with that <laughs> <laughs> yes I love it well thank you so much it's been so great to like finally be on and like Yay! talk about all the things <laughs> I'm so glad you got to join me you'll be back don't worry you absolutely be back okay okay great great <laughs> So everyone, this is Britt. Her social media links are going to be below. Check them out. Check her out. Um, She's amazing. And have a good rest of y'all's day. Stay weird, y'all. Bye.